So welcome to this management theory today. We're gonna to talk a bit about artificial harmony and psychological safety in the workplace. So what is artificial harmony? It's really about the concept of when teams really prioritize getting along and they have a fear of conflict, a fear of dissension, discord or strife over having deeper relationships and making the best decisions that they can. Uh, they really have this kind of deep-seated fear that having any kind of conflict in the workplace will really cause a team to start to head towards that downward spiral of destructive conflict one day over the long run. And so they avoid conflict at all possible and try to, what we like to call as being Canadians, playing nice with everyone as best as we can. And so that's the first concept of artificial harmony. And the second that I want to describe is psychological safety. It really refers to the perception of the consequences of taking interpersonal risk or the belief that the team is safe from risk uh, in the face of being seen as ignorant, dumb, stupid, negative, weak, or even disruptive in the workplace. And uh, that's what we talk about psychological safety is that teams with high, high psychological safety, teammates feel safe to take risks around their team members all the time. And they also feel very confident that the team around them won't embarrass them in public or punish them uh, on the sides, uh, side of the business or outside of the office uh, in private. They feel confident no one will embarrass them when they ask a stupid question. And they really have this sense of freedom to communicate. And so what is, the, what is so important about these two concepts of artificial harmony and psychological safety is that we see in many organizations, especially in Canada, that artificial harmony takes a primary focus in the organization and it really can become a really destructive element that prevents it from being especially creative, having great discussions, having good conflict and making better decisions in the office. So signs you might have artificial harmony and not enough psychological safety is that you've got boring meetings with really limited spirited discussions or you really have to get people to speak up. Um, as a leader. Your individuals feel hesitant uh, to voice dissent during discussions. A lot of the issues during meetings get unresolved or have to be postponed. Teammates are resorting to back channels. Uh, uh, they're talking about the meeting outside afterwards. They raise issues afterwards. Uh, decisions are not being made in the meetings but being deferred. Uh, they, uh, the team really lacks a buy-in during the meetings when a decision is made. And so they actually try to cause, stop the decision from being uh, working out later in the implementation phase, for example. They, they try to stall execution. And another reason you might have artificial harmony and not psychological safety is that maybe you're focusing so much on making the team happy, kind, positive, and encouraging others to not complain that you're actually making it worse. Now let's talk about this, that in uh, 2012, um, this really started to becoming a really big issue because Google spent millions and millions of dollars on this project called Project Aristotle, which was a tribute to Aristotle's quote back then, which uh, said that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And the, the team at Google spent a lot of years trying to understand what made good teams. They, uh, they reviewed decades of academic studies on teamwork, they interviewed people, they looked at different reward mechanisms. They looked at different performance tools. They looked at all the organizational behavior theory that we talk about in this channel and looked at how they even socialized. Apparently they monitored over a hundred different groups for more than a year on this project Aristotle. And what they learned that it wasn't really about hiring the best people. It wasn't about hiring for IQ or Q, testing their IQ levels, hiring only extroverts, giving them a battery of psychological tests so that they balance each other or matched. It wasn't about having the best processes or the best tools or micromanaging or macro managing them, but it really came down to one thing around psychological safety and artificial harmony, dealing with these two issues. And so it's really interesting that to really make a good team this is one of the main critical elements before you can do anything. And how do you fix it? You know, uh, students always ask me, uh, or my managers have always asked me before is, well, I've got this happening in my workplace. How do I fix it? And they say, well, the first is to focus on building relationships with your employees so that you have relationship built trust. 
and not task-based trust, which is another a focus for another video one day. But simply, the way to describe it is that they encourage the team members to take the time to get to know each other and become friends so that when they disagree, they know it won't be taken personally. Or when they ask a stupid question, they know that other coworkers will think highly of them still. Because you can't really hate someone you like. And so the concept is really building the relationships within the teams, spending time together, getting to know each other personally, getting to know what the personalities are like in the workplace so that everyone knows each other well. And that's how you create the psychological safety for the team so that you can break this artificial harmony that might be working, occurring in the organization that you work at. There's tools such as uh, using DeBono's six thinking hats during meetings that encourages people to think differently as well to fix artificial harmony. Focusing on constructive conflict versus relationship-based conflict, which I'll get, I'll use another video on that because that's a really big topic on its own and more than 10 minutes on its own. And so the, um, and you also create uh, conflict norms in the office around how you want to encourage people to have conflict. Um, having some processes, you know, when you're facilitating st strategic planning sessions, I remember there's, you also have processes and, and key questions where you mine for conflict with one person responsible at the meeting to act as kind of the inten intentional questioner. Uh, I always like to use the example of the, the nine-year-old that asks all those questions of why, right? And asks too many questions. And there's also, there's lots of conflict brainstorming techniques as well. Um, if you're really interested in learning more about the subject, I wanted to bring two books for you today, which is uh, one is Charles Duggig, The Power, Power of Habit, the Smarter, Faster, Better. Uh, he wrote this book on a lot of the work on Project Aristotle around how they uh, talked about group, group norms and organizations. Some of the things that I marked in this in this book is um, really around the, the psychological safety concepts of what he identified as a primary outcome. And the, the teams have also success based on how they treat each other well. You know, con they have good conversational turn talking and have high average social sensitivity as well in organizations. And so those are some great examples of, if you wanna learn more about Project Aristotle and how it worked. And one of the big things I took away from this book was really the fact that um, what really became out was managing the how the, of the team, not the who. So what really was really interesting from, from my perspective is looking at that million dollar research that Charles uh, summarizes in this book is really that it wasn't who you hired, but it's how you made them work together. That was more critical. And so what it might mean from an HR perspective is you don't have to hire the best, but you have to make them the best by creating the processes and how to work well together. And another book I, I really like too on this concept of, of reducing artificial harmony and psychological safety is uh, this book called Culture Code by uh, Daniel Coyle here. Um, and he did a pretty good job of also summarizing some of those elements. And one thing I did like about his book was he gave an outline of how you can address psychological safety. Uh, and they, they did some research on this, which is to create a physical proximity often in circles with coworkers so that they're actually not too far away. There's actually some research in here that talks about uh, what's called the Allen curve is that they actually measured how teams feel close to each other by the physical distance uh, between each other. And it's really interesting that there's this curve around, you want them to be around eight to 24 meters uh, in distance as a team member so that they still feel uh, psychologically close to each other. And one other thing that uh, Daniel talks about too is also profuse amounts of eye contact which Charles also talks about in his book, uh, physical touch, Lots of handshakes, fist bumps, hugs, um, lots of short energetic exchanges, no long speeches with the coworkers. There's a high level of mixing. Everyone's really talking to each other like a good house party. There's few interruptions, lots of questions, um, intensive active listening, which we saw that in Project Aristotle as well. Lots of humor and laughter and having fun in the workplace. And they're really small, attentive curtsies, right? You know, just saying the thank yous when doors are open or coffee is poured or asking someone if they want a glass of water. These kind of small things can really go a long way to creating this uh, psychological safety in the workplace and getting rid of this artificial harmony that we seem to be having 
more and more in the workplace as we try to be too professional in the office. And I hope you love that theory. You know, I hope you found that interesting. And maybe try some of these uh, techniques in the office and let me know how it goes within your office. I'd love to see that in the comments too. So hit a like and send a subscribe. So thanks very much for watching and talk to you guys soon. Bye.